This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Rock and Roll Denim, Bill Fick Ford, the WCRA, and Resist All. Attention all rodeo athletes. Join us for the Cowtown Christmas Championship Rodeo in December. Over $360,000 in prize money in the historic Cowtown Coliseum in Fort Worth, December 14th through 17th. And no entry fees. Qualify using the VRQ for the Triple Crown of Rodeo 1 million cash bonus. Featured on a CBS network broadcast. To get started, go to the App Store, download the WCRA Rodeo app, and hit nominate. This is your chance to rodeo in December. Nominate today or visit us at WCRARodeo.com. Guys, another year has ticked by. Challenging year, but there was somebody you could rely on if you needed a new Super Duty pickup, and that was Bill Fick Ford. Once again, the number one Super Duty dealer in the entire country. You guys have seen what's going on in the car business, in the truck business. You're seeing trucks being sold for thousands above MSRP. Well, if you go to Bill Fick Ford, it doesn't matter where you are at in the continental U.S. He will take care of you. He will stand by the product and he will not take advantage of you. Guys, Bill Fick Ford is the only place you can go in 2022 for a no bull discount. Bill Fick Ford. What sets Resist All apart is the legacy of the cowboys who wear the brand. These traditions are passed down from fathers to sons, from heroes to future champions. Since 1927, Resist All has been handcrafting the finest American-made cowboy hats. Generation after generation, we live it every day. This is The Gage with host Chance Conradu. Are you freaking serious? It's Conrado. This is The Gage, and I am Chance Conrado. On this episode of the podcast, we have got the uh, the 2022 number one breakaway roper going into the National Finals Rodeo, Martha Angelone. She is a proper Virginian and a bartender. Not anymore, but it's a good episode. Check it out. Riley said you were rolling through with your truck and trailer. Did you find somewhere to park back there? Well, I'm in the wrong parking lot, but it's okay. Where'd you end up parking? I'm over there. Behind that building. I don't even know what's over there. No, Like me that either. RV place? Uh, Camper spot? Where was it? I don't know. It's literally like in this little alley right here. Really? I don't know. Did you lock your trailer? Yeah, we did. <laughs> it's probably a good if idea. If we get stabbed, right? it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> your Amanda would kill me. She looks like she's a little worried about getting stabbed. Oh, you, yeah. You guys might have seen some different things in your time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Good. Great. Grand. You know they drink that Dr. Pepper before we get going? No, I'm good. You know the drink and talk at the same time? <laughs> yeah. Take it with you. Make a little shank so you don't get stabbed <laughs> on your way out. I did notice there was some real creepy dude out there, like, raiding the trash can, like a scrapper or something. Yeah, there's, oh, some, there's some shady guys around here. I don't even know. He had some weird truck that looked like it came from Indonesia. <laughs> I remember I walked, out, I walked out one night, and just this random guy mo- moving along on his bicycle. At like 9, 10 p.m. like, okay. You have a little trailer on it? You see that guy? The guy with the trailer Not on his he'd bike? Have, he'd have a trailer on it. Yeah. You see those guys rolling through stockyards sometimes, too, on the bike with the little trailer? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very creepy over there. It's creepy. There's a lot. North of... side's creepy after dark. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff I wonder about whenever I go over there. When you walk through the alley on the back to go back to your trailer? Oh, yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. You, that'll unman you real quick. You see some of those dudes. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for coming. Um, the the cool thing about doing a podcast with you is I don't really know anything about you, so we could oh god we could learn some stuff. <laughs> yes, sir. You could inform me. Did you yes, call sir. me sir. Yeah, I did. Or you, you're oh yeah, you're from Virginia. She told me that's where that comes from, right? Yeah. It's yes, sir. It's yes, yes, ma'am. Your grandma's your mima. I bet, right? Uh, sometimes. Really? It depends on which one it was. Which well, grandma? You got one grandma and one made up grandma name. Oh yeah, like uh, dad's was always grandma, and then mima was mom's. So, mm-hmm. that's how we always did, did it. it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, if you have kids and make it to grandmahood, what are you going to be? Are you going to be grandma? Or I don't Mima? even want to do all that. So, I don't want to even think <laughs> about that. <laughs> you don't want to go through all that? No, I don't really think I want to do all that. Like the whole thing or just like a certain part? Like kids. It's too early to talk about all that kind of stuff. Well, how old are you? 27. 
man. I know I'm kind of old. Biology. <laughs> yeah. Like you're, you're running away from your prime. Like it's too early to have kids. And you're like, yeah, exactly. It's been 40 years. Science is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Fallon just had a kid. She was 40. Yeah. Totally fine. Bounce yeah. right back. You'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, my mom was like 40 before she had any of us. So it's okay. Really? Yeah. My mom's. <laughs> oh, wow. She's your mom's grandma age. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to tell her that, but yeah. No. <laughs> She might kill me. Really? Yeah. Well, she doesn't know my address. I'll be safe. <laughs> she's not out there in that parking lot, right? No, I'm she's not. not in the mood for <laughs> fighting with She's people. the one that you should be worried about. <laughs> yeah? She could be the one that pops out behind the dumpster. Yeah. Never yeah. know. Well, well, there you have it. What, well, dude, tell me about yourself a little bit. I, uh, she sent me something you did with JJ the other day, and I know that you're sitting number one in the world in breakaway, and that's pretty awesome. Yes, that sir. probably feels good. Yeah. Stop, uh, stop calling me, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm from Virginia. Uh, I lived there the whole time I was in high school and everything, and then I went to school in Oklahoma, actually, for three years, and then I ended up at Weatherford College, and I lived in Weatherford for about two years after that and then I moved over to Stephenville and I actually ran a place off of JJ and them and stuff and I've been at that place for like three and a half years now mm -hmm. and I've kind of just stayed because of all the jackpots and the rodeos and stuff around here that's what everybody does you yeah get sucked into Stephenville you never leave yeah you kind of have to stay so, I, I mean I like Weatherford better but it's hard to find places unless you're trying to buy a place or something over there and I don't have the money for that yet so. yeah well, and every hour that goes by, it gets more expensive. Oh, yeah. It's stupid how much land costs now. It doesn't make sense. It's all fake. Oh, yeah. Somebody decided that. So, hold on. Do you go everywhere, and it doesn't matter how old they are, younger than you, older than you, right around the same age, you just call them sir? Yeah. Everybody. Oh, yeah. Did you call him sir? You didn't call him sir. Why? I wonder why that is. Because I haven't had to answer a question to him yet, well, I guess. What if someone's just talking to you normally? Is it? Is it yes, sir? Oh, yeah. What if you know their name? You ever call them by their name? Uh, Sometimes. It's usually when I'm mad, though. Really? And what yeah. if you're drinking? Do you still say sir when you're drinking? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, I still call my sister ma'am sometimes. Really? Yeah. I mean, so and the other thing. things I call her, we don't have to talk about out loud, so it's all right. Other things? <laughs> sister things? Yeah, sister things. Love-hate relationship. That's siblings. <laughs> but, so what, I guess what made you want to pursue a career in breakaway rope? And I know you team rope and... and Kind of uh, do all the ranchy shit. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've always, like, I mean, I ran barrels and poles and tied goats. And I even cut some in high school and everything. And uh, I've always just wanted to rope. Um, I've always just had, I don't know what you would call more of a passion towards roping and everything. And that was just something that fit my lifestyle a lot more and stuff. And even when we didn't have the pro rodeos and everything, I still went to all the jackpots and the amateur rodeos during the week and everything. Because, like, even... I mean, I'm at the UPRA finals this weekend and stuff, and I was at the Texas Circuit finals last week, and our rounds at the Texas Circuit finals paid, like, 1900 a round to win it. And, like, last night, my sister won the round at uh, Dallas, and she won 2900 So even, like, the amateur finals paid just as good as our circuit finals and stuff, too. So I'm just, I've still been doing all that and everything, and I feel, like, like, with how the breakaway's grown and stuff, that I took the right path, like – I, I was never the barrel racer. Like, I had a nice horse and everything. I just, I didn't love it. Like, I just kind of did it for the all-around and stuff in high school. And I've only done it once or twice since. And it's usually at WPRA finals to try to win the all-around. But uh, I just, ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted rope. We never thought it'd be in the NFR or anything like that. So now that it's kind of a reality, I know it's not exactly where we want it to be yet. But it's more of a reality that we can make a living in a career out of our a hobby as we ha used to have to call it because rope and the breakaway didn't usually pay anything for us a couple of years ago and then now I mean you can go to a roping every month and some of them will pay 10 15 thousand some of them will pay 30 thousand so just like I won the women's finals in May and I won close to 70 thousand over a three three span or three day span right there and stuff like that we just never knew what happened and now it is so it's really cool for us yeah i mean and it just it almost like happened overnight because you have people like jackie and jj who've got like 20 25 women's world championships and no one really even knew what that meant oh yeah and now it's it's in the american it's in oh, yeah. everything and it is kind of amazing well and it's crazy because like all of us, we would always try for those world titles and stuff, but 
I mean, now uh, how those WPRA world titles that Jackie and JJ and all them have, I mean, Jackie's won the pro rodeo world too, but yep. we all used to always go to those ropings and always go to those jackpots and stuff and try to win that at the end of the year. But it's like nobody ever got the credit that they needed to for that at the end of the year for winning all those. I mean, JJ's won 18 world titles, you know what I mean? And it back then to us, it was just as big as winning – the world like maybe I get to this year you know what I mean and it was the same meaning and same feeling to us but nobody really knew about it yet so now it's cool that we get to rope at all the pro rodeos and rope with I mean all the guys and everything and get to go to all these big rodeos and actually have the chance to showcase our talents and everything so yeah well and I mean it gives you a future yeah because all those women that you talk about they had to do other things focus on other things whereas like a barrel racer maybe didn't have to do that. And yeah. I mean, you're talking money that you would never think that a breakaway roper could win. No, oh, yeah. And the tension, I mean, for me, I never thought it would be as popular. Yeah. Well, and that's what, I mean, whenever my dad was still alive and everything, he always told me if I ever wanted to make the NFR, I'd have to be more serious about my barrel racing. And I'm like, dad, I don't want to do that. Like, I mean, I want to make the NFR one day, but hopefully they'll have the breakaway in there one day. You know what I mean? And, Sarah, my little sister and me always talked about it with him that like we we really didn't care to run barrels and stuff uh, that we always hope that it'd be where it's at today. And it's crazy. Like my sister doesn't go usually rodeo and stuff, but like the within the past month, she's won close to probably, I don't know, maybe even 40,000, 30,000. In the past month, she won 15000 at Hanchies. She won almost 10000 at just the Abilene Special, just a good little jackpot. And then she won Joe Beaver's Roping, too. And she won three of the biggest Ropings right there in a row the past month, and she hardly even goes. So it shows not only the girls that are going to the pro rodeos, but, like, girls that are just going to the jackpots, how big they are. Like, Sarah didn't realize that Shane Hanchies' Roping was – that big of a payout and that big of a rope. And at the end of the day, she's like, I want 15,000. I was like, I told you, like, you just didn't listen to me earlier. Like there's a lot of those jackpots and opportunities for us now too. And we're glad that everybody's stepping up for all those. Yeah. What did you, were you guys ever thinking about regular jobs? Like, like (laughs) a nurse or a teacher or like a traditional feminine job, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Well, like I went to school for physical therapy stuff. Um, I didn't end up finishing out everything because I had to do like an internship and everything and you had to do it where it was like nine to five and go in and I mean I know I had to do that to be able to actually have that job but I had a job I bartended in Weatherford for five years. Um, I worked at a, a seafood place and then I worked at a sushi place too and uh, I made such good money. I mean I'd make 250 to 300 just on a weeknight like a normal weeknight and I'd work three, four, five days a week if I could. And I was getting by back then with that. And I didn't really honestly care to because I still got to rodeo and stuff. So my mom's not the proudest (laughs) with me about all that. But why? Because she wanted us to grow up and have jobs and everything. And now me and Sarah are just roping now. (laughs) So (laughs) So is your mom's disappointed? I don't know if she's disappointed us. She's proud of us. But I know she definitely knew that we were trying to go to college to get a degree that we're going to use. And I doubt either of us ever use it. So that's like most degrees now. I know. So you can have all that and still be a bartender. Oh yeah. Like 40. Cause Oh yeah. Probably still make more money than a teacher. Yeah. It's crazy how, I mean, a bartending too is actually really good money. I always thought like you go in, you have to work like six, seven hours and walk out of cash at the end of the night. And nobody usually knows how much you make, you know? Unless they leave it on a credit card tip or something like that. that so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from bartender to breakaway roper. Oh, yeah. It's a nice little story. Oh, yeah. That's what I did forever. A lot of the people that uh, at the last place I bartended at, a lot of them became like family and stuff, too. Like, uh, there's like six or eight of them that are just flying out for the NFR this year. There was a bunch of them that flew out last year and everything. So it's kind of like I had a I have an extra family now from it too really it's kind of cool yeah kind of bar was it like a country western type bar well were you in character the whole time or no I was not in character the whole time we kind of got to wear whatever we wanted to wear there sometimes we just had to wear 
the normal stuff you'd have to wear at work and stuff, and then you got to dress up on the weekends and everything. It was just the last one I worked at, though, was a sushi place. I mean, they had, like, a pool table and stuff in there and everything, and it was kind of, there was, like, the chill side, and then it was, like, the sushi side, too, so. In Weatherford? Mm Mm-hmm. It was called, it it was called Saki. It's right next to the liquor store. Yeah. Over there, so. Hmm. That's it. That's interesting. That's a fun little come up story. Oh yeah. So I'm just wondering because I'm really fixated on the fact that you call everything and everybody a sir. <laughs> it's really politically correct. But so even like your regular bar flies, it was. Oh yeah. Give me a cures. Oh yeah. I mean, yes, unless sir. I had to call him an asshole that day, but most of the time it was sir or ma'am. Was it sir? You're an asshole, or just you're an asshole? <laughs> you're an asshole. That's how <laughs> that happened. <laughs> well. Do you, I mean, do you think that you'll just do this forever? Until I can't, probably. I mean, I've always been one that's always roped. And, like, I had did an interview the other day, and a lady asked me, like, what's my timeline on when do I think that I'm going to be done with roping? And I was like, I don't know, I guess, like, I don't even want to say it or something, but, like, when I can't anymore, you know what I mean? When I'm too crippled to be able to rope anymore. But, I mean, now with the opportunities and how – much it's grown i mean you could still look at jj and ld and all them i mean they're still kicking our ass and they're their age you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. i want to be them one day so i i feel like i'm gonna try to keep doing it until i physically can't yeah yeah what uh i mean what else do you do that's about it i mean i train horses and stuff and sell horses and everything like that but other than that i'm pretty boring I don't really, I don't really have much of a life whenever it comes, like, goes past the rodeo part You can't of it. really, though, right? I mean, if you're going to rodeo and make enough money to survive and thrive and yeah. do it at the highest level, I mean, that's your life. You yeah. Don't, you don't do other stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go be, like, the bar fly like people are or do other things, you're not focusing on what exactly we're here for, and I feel like it's just more distractions to do all that stuff. Um, I know a lot of girls, especially in college right now, they'll all do that, and I have nothing against it. I mean, I was that girl in college and stuff too, but where I'm at in my life, I'm pretty boring. I just usually rope during the day and either go to a jackpot at night or just hang out or do something around the house or something like that. So Yeah, it's probably the right path. I mean, but, I mean, you're sitting number one in the world, which I don't know if you want to call it a hot seat but it's it's definitely some pressure that you want to maintain that and you have to have the if you look at all the world champions in every event i mean you have to have the right mindset coming in that high to maintain it yes sir um, and that's what we've been trying to focus on and stuff and i've been practicing and everything for the finals and starting and like next month um i'll probably set up a lot of the our place like how the finals will be set up and everything and start making actual runs and stuff but I've been riding everything from my younger horses to my good horses and stuff, practicing for it and everything, and that's been my main focus right now. Like, we've had a lot of finals and a lot of good jackpots come up and everything, but in the end, that's our main goal for the end of the year, so. Yeah, it's a good goal. Yes, sir. It's like the only goal, really. Yeah, that's always our goal starting off every year, so we always hope that – I've always hoped that I would – was going to be in this position and I'm blessed that I am this year and stuff and um I kind of I didn't lose my good horse during the season but he had colic surgery and at the end of August and uh London's mom and London have been taking care of him for me down in Catula and uh I can start riding him again at the beginning of November so I'm really looking forward to that like I got a lot of other good horses and stuff but None of them compared to him. So he's such a winner, and it makes it so easy for me to win that I'm ready to get back on him. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the, that's the one, like, X factor that changes everything. And I, I okay. watched that thing you did with JJ, JJ and I, she had said something. What did she say? Something about how great of a roper you were, but you never had the right horse or you had too slow of a horse, oh, and yeah. that was the thing that changed it for you maybe yeah. or got you into a position where you could place more? Yeah, whenever I came out to college, I really didn't have the horses for out here. And then I bought a horse whenever I got to college. And uh, she was really good, but she was really tight. Like she was one that you'd either win the rodeo on or you'd miss to be really fast. And uh, then I kind of 
two years ago after Fort Worth, I t- actually took a colt to Fort Worth that I was riding for somebody else and was going to end up selling. And I won third on him at Fort Worth, and I ended up buying him after that, and that was his first rodeo. And he was the horse that I won the finals off of the first year, and I ended up winning the average, and I was the reserve champ that year. And I kind of rodeoed on him and another little mare that I trained all uh, last year, and they were good, but they weren't exactly what I needed. But I could get by and win enough on them the whole time. And this year after the women's finals, I won uh, – I won uh, the women's finals on Jesse James, and it was uh, Tanner Green's horse, and I ended up buying him off of him, and then a couple weeks later, he let me run some on Legend, and that's the horse that got hurt earlier this year, and uh, I don't know. I, at first, I couldn't rope off of him. I was getting frustrated, and Tanner sat down one day with me in the practice pen, and we got to working on some stuff, and then whenever it clicked, it was like it was hard for that horse to get beat anywhere because he made everything so easy for me that it was so easy for me to rope that whenever we were at a rodeo I mean when I backed in the box I didn't have any thought in my mind that I wasn't going to win it you know and I liked having that confidence that I had on him and Jesse's good Jesse's a badass too but I just don't have the exact same confidence on him because he's still kind of green and he's still young I mean he's just seven and before I had him I don't really think they took him to a lot of rodeos or he hasn't been hauled as much as legend has like Tanner took legend the last probably seven years to all the rodeos I mean he's been to all the rodeos I was at this summer and everything and it was kind of nice having a horse that's been there done that and that is the caliber of horse that he is because it just made my job so much easier this summer yeah, yeah. I mean, if people don't really know the sport of breakaway, right, uh, like don't know it and understand it real well, they may not realize like in that one and a half to three second time period how many variables there are and, and what you're up against. And, you know, as far as making a clean, smooth, and fast run, because yeah. you can't do anything without those three components, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, old son, if you're not wearing rock and roll denim, then you ain't no cowboy. I'm Dale Brisby, the greatest bull rider ever to live. And I'm known for keeping it 90. And I keep it 90 because I'm wearing rock and roll denim with reflex technology. They give me the flexibility I need to get that knee up. My biggest problem is I get an earache because I get my knee up so high, I kick myself in the ear. That's why I'm the greatest of all time. It's because of rock and roll denim, old son. Get you some. What, what are like? What are some of the variables that you face and like coming from being a, an intermediate or amateur if you want to call it that to being a true professional performance you know athlete yeah that's what rodeo is at least to me yeah. and uh you know what are some of those variables and like in the differences between a horse that's not quite as seasoned as well and and one that is borderline automatic yeah I feel like how even beco- between my two good my two best ones that I feel like is Jesse and Legend and Even between the two of them, I feel like Legend's a lot faster and he scores a lot better than Jesse does. And not saying that Jesse really, truly lacks in those areas, but Legend's just 10 times better than him. Like, I I know every single time that he's going to be as fast as he possibly can whenever I drop my hand. Like, at Cheyenne... I knew I had it. I knew I had a couple calves that freaking hauled ass, and like it wasn't even a thought in the back of my mind that I was, still wasn't gonna make a good run. Like the one I, I think it was the semifinals round. I ended up winning it on him, and I knew that calf was not that great. I knew he ducked off to the right, and then as soon as you get to him, he would duck under you and go back to the left. And Legend just made my job so much easier right there. And I feel like. With girls, a lot of day, a lot of times nowadays, there's so many girls that rope so good, and a lot of girls that have a lot of potential to be the best roper in the world, but they're not mounted, kind of like I was three years ago. I mean, I had the roping ability, I feel like, but I didn't have the horsepower underneath me. Like I had, like even last year, a lot of times I had that one shot, and I was either going to win the rodeo or win first through fifth, or I wasn't going to place. And now, I think this year, like, when I went out there this summer, I was focusing on how many times can I place this summer. Like, place at all the rodeos, and you'll end up higher in the the standings. And it turned out to be true. And, like, I just went and focused on 
catching my calf every time and making my run. And a lot of times I ended up winning the rodeo, but it was because of the horsepower I had versus my, not really my roping ability, but it, having the better horses makes your roping so much easier that you don't, I don't hardly even have to do my job that great whenever you got a good one under you. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, in tie down, that's like the entire thing. There's so many guys who rope better than anybody out there like that you don't even know them yeah and you get in a practice bin with them and they can help you and they can tell you to do everything you're like dude if this guy ever figured it out or yeah if he had the money for the horse he would go and win the world oh yeah but it's all the horse oh, you yeah. have to have the access to them oh yeah and that's where like you can watch like we weren't up the same time as the guys at a lot of them but whenever we were up and you got to watch some of the tie down slack you'd be like holy cow like you've never got like we've always watched the boys at the finals and stuff but I've never got to see him rope at all the rodeos during the summer and everything. And it's mind blowing how much a good horse changes it for the tie down too. Cause like in the breakaway, we can have a bad calf and still make them good. You know what I mean? But with the guys, it's the draw is so critical. And whenever they got those great horses, it just makes it so much better. And like watching a lot of the rodeos this summer, I was impressed by a lot of the guys' horses out there. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the caliber of horses nowadays, it, but it's everything. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. And that's so for is the sure. price. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> those go together, but it's it changes everything. But I guess if you're going to give, like, give somebody advice and tell them what to do if they want to uh, really achieve something and be the best bartender. Yeah. How do they become the best bartender? Don't give okay. up and keep practicing. Uh, like, Wherever I came from, like, if you said roping back there, they kind of looked at you like you were crazy. You I know said I mean? bartender. Oh, oh, bartender. See, you were so focused on roping that yeah. I said, how do you be the best bartender? Well, and you didn't even catch it. I mean, I Because Ty is thinking about bartending and well, you're a pro. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. You just got to be good at talking crap and doing good at your job. Yeah, like, I love bartending. I felt like I, that was something that I was really good at, too. And, um... I don't know, being fast on your feet was another thing. Like, whenever you're bartending, if you – I I learned that if you brought somebody another drink because they looked like they needed one, they weren't going to bitch at you for doing it. They'd probably thank you. They might say, I didn't want that one, but they're still going to drink it. So She is so serious. <laughs> like, she literally just answered what apparently was a horrible joke <laughs> and answered it, like, serious, like, ready to go. Like, well, this is how you do it. Yeah, I mean. You're a competitor. Yeah. Yeah. Even when you talk, you're like, I'm not going to fall for that joke. Well, I mean, I didn't know if you were being serious about it, so I just answered it. No, I'm being serious about it. <laughs> oh, okay. well, You're sitting number one in the world, you know. <laughs> Well, hey, that's cool. You got ice in your veins. It's like <laughs> whether you. it's bartending. <laughs> Thank Heck, you. I, yes, sir, I do. Thank you. <laughs> My bad. It's not. No, it's, it's actually a good thing. Yeah, you, well, I uh, I think you'll have a lot of success. You have the right mindset. And, mm, thank uh, you. Yeah, ice in your veins. So, you know, it should be good. It'll be fun to watch, and, and hopefully you get your, your gold buckle. Yeah, but I hope so, too. I think you will. I'm going to try to do my job out there and just go make – my run on each calf and see where it plays out. I'd love to win the average and the world. That would be such a cool feeling at the end of the week. But uh, we'll see how it goes. That's my plan, though. Yeah. We'll see if I... Uh, I think that's probably a good plan. Yeah, I, It's pretty decent, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. But, I don't know. You you seem to have everything put together the right way. So, it doesn't seem like you get too distracted. No. I'm, or fall into any Vegas traps. No, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I mean, maybe after. If I win the world, I might fall into some of those Vegas traps for a day or two. But you got to celebrate if you do that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Because technically, oh. you've already started for the next year anyway. So <laughs> yes, sir. Got to enjoy it. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my That's gosh. the only reason I... The, tr- the only reason I want you to leave is because then no one's going to call me sir. Oh, my gosh. That is just really hard to hear, Do I need? Sir. Do I need to pull... Take, take the sir away from you for once? I, has it, does do anybody me, ever call me do, sir do in any place that you've ever... Yes really. or no? Huh? Yes. No. There you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's better. I feel more comfortable. Okay, Everybody well, feel better about then, that? Then I won't say sir. I'll just say yes. <laughs> You're going to remember this and be like, you remember the day that I gave up the word sir? Change yeah. your whole life. Your I'll whole to, approach. I'll have to tell my mom, well, I'm not allowed to say sir anymore. I'm sorry. You tell her if she has a problem. <laughs> I'll say that, you, you raised me wrong. I'm not she allowed did. to say sir. God damn it. You she did me, raise you wrong. You gave me too many manners. 
Yeah. So wrong, because you're not even going to give her grandchildren. She fucked up. <laughs> yeah, she keeps asking me or Sarah who's going to go first. And I'm like, <laughs> it better be her. It ain't going to be me. Ain't going to be you? Uh-uh. Well, which one has the serious uh, closest to marriage yeah, boyfriend? We're probably about the same on that, so I don't know. Is that we're... nothing? Is uh, it no, none? no. It's it's there, but I don't, I don't know. We don't talk about that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's no, no, that's sir. okay. You say I'm pretty serious, but that's a little bit too serious for me when we talk, talk about all that stuff <laughs> about having, yeah, well, you know, about having babies and getting 20s, married and all that kind of stuff. I'm only 27, man. Uh, only 27. It's like there were people who had like did three tours in the military already and had like eight kids. Yeah, I mean, some people want to be married by the time they're 20. I threw that out the window a long time ago. I don't think people are really getting married that much anymore. I mean, a lot of them do. But not Have getting, you not, not looked at young. Facebook or lately? No, I try to stay it's off like, of Facebook. It's like engagement season. Every time I get on yeah, there, somebody else Yeah, but that's every engaged. year. Oh, yeah, exactly. So people are getting married. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of a bum deal for everybody nowadays. Yeah, yeah. it happens. Yeah. Ty, what about your, your people circle? It's a totally different world, totally different circle than hers or mine. They all getting married? It depends. Not really. Yeah. Not, uh, well, it's, he's it's, full it's, on it's not, in the city, like it's like it depends. But like I know a lot of people around my age, they're just not looking for that. At, looking to get married at least this young. Yeah. Now, once they hit like the, I know some people in their thirties that got married eventually, but most people around my age are not doing it. I mean, not like my best pe- friend. People were only living to till thirty, like a couple hundred years ago. Yeah. They had so to pop them to, kids out quick. Yeah, we're not worried about that. Yeah, we're if, living if to like 80. If there weren't ropings where you could make money and stuff. And, yeah, and you were, I mean, that takes I mean, time. You're pretty ranchy, I guess. You'd be ranching. You'd have to have kids just to work the ranch. Yeah. yeah I, lots I'm, of them. I'm okay. You'd we, be in a totally, think about it. You'd be bartending? Nope. No. Like, wait, no, wait. You'd be like making bread and shit. Yeah, It'd I'm be a okay different world. not having to do that. Yeah, it would be hard. I don't want to be doing that or changing diapers or any of that kind of stuff. I'm all right. Do you watch... Uh, the 1883, the Yellowstone show? I have watched some of it. I thought it was pretty cool. I got through, like, the... I've only watched, like, three episodes of it, but I started it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. So. But they, I mean, but that's a hard way to live right there. Yeah, I'm okay that we're in this time and not in that time. <laughs> yes, me That's too. a little too much Especially when those girls lifted up their arms. I was like, that's a no-go. Yeah, that's aggressive. <laughs> I can't think of any other, like, period piece TV show where they didn't shave the girls up. Like, that's the only one I can think of where they grew out the hair. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could have braided it if you wanted to, but. I know. And that, you're like, oh, she's oh, that girl's kind of cute. And you're like, oh. oh whoops. Oh. I'm out. Yeah. It's like, no, thanks. <laughs> I understand that that's real, but it's not real in my world. Exactly. Hmm. Well, un- I don't have anything else to try to get out of you, really. This okay. has been a really good interview. Thank you for coming. Yeah, anytime. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. Sir. You know, do, do you like people to call you ma'am? Is that a thing that you enjoy? I mean, sometimes, and then sometimes I look at them like they're crazy. Oh. <laughs> so why are you looking at me like I'm crazy for saying I don't want to be called sir? Okay, yes. Yeah. Good yes. job. She follows Anytime. directions really well. <laughs> like, you're really, I could see why you would be a good bartender and a good breakaway roper. So. Well, my mom used to chase me around with a wooden spoon, so I had to learn how to follow directions. <laughs> oh, the spoon's the worst. You yeah. know what the worst thing to get hit with was, was, you remember how the belts, like, they're all, they're different now, but oh, yeah. did your dad have, like, the conchos, like, oh, the yeah. silver conchos, those real awful belts? Oh, yeah. Getting I hit got with one of those sons of bitches yeah. w- would change your whole outlook on life. Yeah, I got that a few times. Did you? Oh, yeah, and my mouth washed out with soap. I was. That was the worst. That was the worst to me. Oh, yeah. I, it I didn't really change how I talk, but you don't lose, tried it a you, few times. You don't lose that soap taste. It's, no. It, it lingers. Yeah, for a couple of days, I feel like. Yeah. Not literally. You but. look like you're, like, 15, are you? Mm-hmm. So you're probably like, well, if my parents hit me, they would be in jail. <laughs> it's a different mindset. No, I don't think Amanda's going to hit you. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe that. Split reins hurt. Now her little brother, he's a little hellion. Oh, my God. He's like three. Mm-hmm. This is my boyfriend's sister, by the way. Mm. Yeah. And her, her, their little brother, what is he, three or four? Almost four. Mm-hmm. He was roping the other day and telling us all how to work the shoot. How to bring up the calves. He got mad at her other brother, Caleb, because he didn't set the gate. or And he started bringing up the calves without him. And he got a good cussing in the middle of the arena the other day, but it's all right. From a three-year-old? Oh, yeah. It yeah. was funny. I was laughing my butt off. I was like, this is not happening. <laughs> all of us are just videoing it. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. He said, hey, next time, why don't you shut that gate so I don't have to do all the extra work, man? He said just like that? I mean, he said a couple different words, but we don't need to say that it came out of a three-year-old's mouth. <laughs> Pretty ranchy kid. Oh, yeah. Does he, does he need the soap in his mouth? 
Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> I don't think you could do it nowadays. No, probably not. I doubt Ridge would stand still for it. He'd just get out. Oh yeah, he'd run away. He'd look smart. at you like you're stupid. What are you doing? Yeah, I I did try to run away a lot. Oh yeah, I ran. I did too until Dad found me. That was the worst. Really? Yep. And then it's ten times worse because they're pissed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. you're not walking right for a few days. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have to explain to people what happened. Well, you had to make I, up that lie at school. It's like, yeah. what? The well, hell I was homeschooled, so I didn't have to make up a lie. Of course, lie to you were homeschooled. Yeah. That's where the ma'am came from. You never picked up the bad habits in public school. No, not really. Yeah. I Riley, mean, I, Riley was homeschooled too, and she never even curses. <laughs> no. uh, I don't know about that. I <laughs> went to school with her. <laughs> homeschooled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I was homeschooled. I wasn't. Yes, I was homeschooled. Is I know that you. better? Oh, so much better. Look at, see, that's the only reason we've kept it going, is we're just <laughs> training. It's rep, just like a horse, repetition. <laughs> okay, I'm working on not to be so polite. Yeah. Why, why you just can't be. I was trying to be nice, man. I don't know you. <laughs> you don't know me any better now, but you do know I don't like sir, so yeah, that's something. I, I know you don't like polite people, so next time no. I'll come in here. Assertive right? people. I like assertive people. <laughs> okay. I do like assertive people, because if people are overly polite, might not be real. You I mean, really I'm know. not that nice. No. I usually never get called nice. No. More no polite, way. really. Yeah. I mean, I've just said it a few times. Yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer seemed polite, too, until he was bashing you in the head. You watch that show? Oh, yeah. I've yeah. seen yeah. a few episodes. How polite was he? Uh, a little I don't aggressive. trust polite people. A little aggressive. A little aggressive. Don't worry. I'm not him. Not the best chef. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not that at all. So. He also said he wasn't that. Okay. Well... <laughs> I'm definitely not that. I yeah. can promise you that. We've all heard that from a serial killer. Oh, Stop trying to learn into traps. <laughs> I'm not a serial killer, I promise you. Yeah. Okay, good. One, one moment she's, just, she's having it's nice manners, nightmares. and then suddenly you're trying to lure her to make, make her seem like a serial killer. You know how it goes. I don't know how this this just like flips so easy. Yeah. Right this there. is how podcasts go. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's all right. What Have you been on other podcasts? No, this is my first try. Really? I learned that people don't like when you're nice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you take that into some of those other podcasts. See how those go. Okay, I'll work on you're it. You're gonna be you're gonna be an expert. Okay, I'll try my best. Yeah, and then you'll be a world champion, and you'll be great at interviews, and like your whole world's gonna change from being right here. Yeah, and then I'll never say "ma'am" or "sir" again. You shouldn't. I mean, you're getting close to thirty, so why? I say mean, that? not even to older people. I say it to old ladies, older women. Oh, so you just Elders. call them "ma'am." I do. Yeah. Well, that's good. I do. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not gonna call someone who's basically my same age, sir. Be well, weird. I don't blame you, but I mean, I call everybody that. Yeah. I'll work on it though. Yeah. Next time. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad we had this talk. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm glad we resolved so much. He'll uh, he'll take your credit card for the therapy session. Okay. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know you want. I, I know you want some money, it. so I know there's something on there. <laughs> Get that. There's three percent fee too for arguing. Okay. And I know it was such a horrible argument too. <laughs> well, we're going to let you get on with your day. It is hot out there and you got horses in the trailer. Okay. So. Thank you. Yes. This has been The Gauge, hosted by me, Chance Conrado, produced and edited by our guy Ty Yeager. Shout out to the executive producers, Dustin Pointer and Cody Denton. Marketing and content produced by Riley Chone. Make sure to rate and review this podcast as well as follow The Gauge on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And make sure to subscribe to The Gauge wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you guys next time.